Now that we've got our UFO dataset in an easier to use form, it's time to do something interesting. Making a map that shows where UFO sightings happen in the United States. A friend recently told me that Conway and White used a similar example in their Machine Learning for Hackers book, which means that I am particularly uncreative. Or that the example is just smashing. Let's go with smashing. We are going to begin with nothing fancy, just a simple map of the US so we have somewhere to place our data in the next video. In the process, we're going to explore D2E's geography library, different map projections, and take a quick peek at Geo data formats. Let's begin. First, we're going to need our trusty old index.html file. As usual, this is where all the JavaScript and CSS are loaded, and we have that one div for the graph. On top of the usual D3 and Code.js, we've also added Q, Topo, JSON, and Lodash. Lodash is a utility library that's got useful functional programming primitives. We will mention it briefly at the end of last section. Top of JSON is Bostock's library for handling geographical data. We're going to look into that in more detail in the last video of this section. And Q is Bostock's library that makes it easier to load multiple datasets. It makes sure we can define multiple loaders and get everything into a callback at once. It's very neat, you'll see. In Code.js we start with the usual boilerplate of adding an SVG element and sizing it appropriately. Next, we need a geographical projection and a path generator to draw the map features. We chose the Albers USA projection because it was created specifically for drawing USA maps, which makes it perfect for our use case. At this point, we could wax poetically about projections for a while, but instead I'm just going to show you what different projections do once we have our map rendering. Scale and translate parameters tell the projection how to behave and need to be hand-tuned for each situation. You'll see them in action when we play around with different projections. The geopath generator is where all the hard work happens. It can take any feature or geometry object from GeoJSON and turn it into a drawable path. Anything from a point or multipoint to a feature collection. We're not going to go into what exactly all the different features are right now, but keep in mind that you can put multiple features or geometry objects together in a collection and draw them with the same path. This renders faster than drawing each object separately, but doesn't let you interact with each one individually. For now, we've just told the path generator to use our projection, and the rest will come when we're drawing. We have to map between feature IDs and state names ourselves, because the top JSON file we're using to make our map doesn't have any metadata. Let's just set up an empty mapping for now and fill it in later when we can see what's going on. On that note, let's get the file. There are many sources of geographical data and we'll talk about them in more detail in the last video of this section. We can use Bostock's us.json file for now. He uses it in every official D2JS example that draws a map of the US. Save it next to our files and we're good to go. To make our map, we first have to load the data. Because we'll add more data sources in the future, we're going to use Q even though we're only loading us.json. As mentioned, Q executes multiple asynchronous functions and returns the results in a single callback. We first add a grouping element for each state. It will hold the state's fill color and name. And we had to use the topo.json library to get a list of geo.json features out of the more concise topo.json presentation in our file. Don't worry about this bit right now, because we'll look into it later. All it takes to draw state surfaces now is to use our path generator on the selection. And after adding some CSS to style.css, well, the map doesn't look like much. Adding the actual borders will fix those weird artifacts between states, and adding some labels will help us fill in that state ID map. We can draw state borders using a single path. The main difference from drawing the areas is that we use topo.json to create a mesh instead of a feature data. The path generator handles everything else. Adding labels is pretty straightforward as well. We add a text element to every grouping element in our state selection. We then print either an ID or a name depending on whether it's already in the mapping or not. To position labels in the center of their state, we use GeoPath's ability to calculate the center point of a geo feature called a centroid. This works well enough for the general case, but has some problems with funny state shapes on the east coast. Now before we can see the result, we have to add styling for borders and labels to style CSS. And voila, a map of the US. Well, we still need state names. The easiest way to fill it in is using a US map found online, unless you know all the states by heart, which I don't. To add a state, just add it to the dictionary that's used to create state ID map. ID is the key, state name is the value. Easy. Once you're done, all state labels show a name. 
And we're also going to use state ID map to connect the UFO dataset to states later on. Oh, and I promised to show you some other projections. For no obvious reason, here are Mercator, Orthographic, and Equirectangular. The science of projections is vast and we won't get into it, but I wanted to show you how easy changing projections was. You should check out D3's documentation to find more options. We've gone through the basics of handling geography in D3.js, drawing a map. In the next video, we're going to augment this map with our UFO dataset.